Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 14. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our boost control and our Tefra V7 style ROMs. We're going to find that we have a tremendous amount of tables to deal with in our boost control tuning routine. We're going to be stripping away all the different tables that we don't need and talking about the ones that are going to be the primary tuning tables we have to worry about in this video. We're going to look in our Evo scan and take a look at the channels we need to data log and then look at our Megalog viewer and plotting that data so we can evaluate what is going on with our boost control. I'll be introducing an open loop and a closed loop style boost control tuning method in this video. So we're gonna be starting off our boost control in open loop and then we'll transition back into the closed loop style control that Mitsubishi has designed the ECU to work in and operate long term. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our boost control and our Tefra V7 style ROM files for both EVO 8 and EVO 9s. Now, what I have open here under ROM documents, I have my 9417, which is going to be the equivalent for an EVO 8. Um, we're gonna find this is both a mass airflow based or a 3D VE speed density based file. It's not going to matter which we're looking at here, which tuning method we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna be doing the tuning in essentially the exact same manner. Now, I'm gonna go over using PSI-based boost control. We have the ability with these Tefra V7 ROMs to use load-based or PSI-based. PSI-based is far superior. It's much easier to deal with and set up your tuning and calibration for uh, doing your setup for your boost control. So that's gonna be the way that I always have done all the tuning with my Tefra V7 ROMs. And again, the way I'm gonna be using this tutorial to show PSI-based boost. Now, the reason why I'm pointing that out is because in a mass airflow style calibration file, we may or may not have an upgraded map sensor. So with the Tefra V7 ROM, you absolutely need to upgrade your map sensor um, with a MAF based file. Now the reason why we wanna do that is because our uh, spark timing tables and our target open loop target air fuel tables, those are gonna be referencing um, the load calculations in PSI. They no longer will look at the load based on the Mitsubishi's OEM way of calculating load, which is gonna be airflow per rev, is gonna be then just reconfigured so that it looks at the MAP sensor. So it's gonna be a hybrid method, the way it's gonna be calculating things. We know from our mass airflow sensor video, we still have our MAP compensation table and our injector scaling information, so the static flow and the latencies that we can go in and tweak to have our fuel delivery proper on the actual mass airflow or the air mass registration side of things. But on the actual boost control side of things, and our spark timing calculations and our target air fuel, we're gonna be referencing our map pressure sensor. So we wanna make sure under our current ROM metadata here, if we're on our map based tune, that we went in and we've set up our uh, map sensor settings here under um, map sensor here in our ROM metadata. We have went in and populated all the values that I've outlined in the specific notes that I have in your Tefra uh, file here, or the folder that you would have downloaded off the website. If we, let's close this out here, into our Tefra ROMs folder under the map sensor scalings ECU flash, we're gonna find that we have different um, ROM types we're working with, so the 8859 or the 9417s, and then I have my settings here for an Omni 4 bar or here for Evo 10 or JDM 3 bar, it's the same sensor scale. So we need to make sure we've populated that data here into our file so it knows that it's dealing with a aftermarket map sensor. So either a three bar, the Evo 10 three bar, or the Omni four bar plug and play map sensor. So once we've accomplished that and we've dialed that data in here and we know in our map based tune or in our 3D VE based tune, we've set that up and it knows to look for a map sensor, we're ready to take a look at our boost control and convert it over into PSI based boost. So again, the way the Mitsubishi ECU works, it looks and it calculates load. Load is a combination of airflow per rev. Now when it's doing that calculation, um, things can get kind of skewed and it can uh, read off. So depending on how we scale things with our mass airflow sensor, um, we can find that our load may change and it can be a bit confusing because the load doesn't necessarily correlate or translate to PSI. So by doing PSI based boost control, we're now able to look just at our map sensor readings and it's much easier to request 20 PSI or 25 PSI or 30 pounds of boost and receive that and tune and look at our data logs and making sure all of our tables and parameters are gonna be falling in line to get us that target boost with the boost control rather than trying to associate our load to a PSI level. So let's jump in here into our current ROM metadata and go down into the boost control section of our Tefer V7 ROM so we can learn how to work with our boost control. So if we scroll all the way down here in our list, 
we're going to find that we have a couple different sections to deal with. We have a boost cut section. We have our boost control settings. These are going to be some background tables and settings that we need to work with. We have our control type that's going to be specifying whether it's going to be a load-based or PSI-based boost control. And then finally down here are boost control tuning tables. These are the core tables that we're going to be working with to do the actual calibration to get our boost control working properly. So the probably the best way to do this um, is to start to jump in here and talk about our boost control and how it works um, and then also jump into our Megalog viewer and take a look at some data logs and data that we need to actually log. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.